Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants update video. As you all know, the news uh, the news is just dry right now. It's sort of a drought when it comes to Giants news. Not too much going on in the football world as everything is quieting down. Everything is more quiet than usual. But teams are getting ready to start their training camps. They're hoping everything goes smoothly. For example, the Giants, their training camp starts on July 28th. So I'm sure behind the scenes and everything, the coaches, the staff, and the players, they're all working together hand in hand to just get everything up and running because they're tired of waiting. They're tired of delays and whatnot. Hence, probably there's not even, they're probably not even doing anything for there to be news about. But there are two articles from Giants Wire that I want to talk about. One on each side of the football, uh, offense and defense. The first one that I'll get into is David Tyree. And David Tyree thinks that the Giants are missing a game-breaking wide receiver. And then later on, I will get into Dalvin Tomlinson and how Dalvin Tomlinson says that the Giants defense has a very Alabama feel to it, or Alabama S-type defense. So let's get into David Tyree first. And so in general about the Giants wide receiving core, right? I've maintained a pretty consistent opinion on it. I've always said since like January, I think our wide receiving core is good enough. Um, it definitely needs a bit more depth and I think that could be filled out by the undrafted free agents that the Giants picked up right after the draft. Guys like Ben Victor, Austin Mack, um, those guys, the other ones, Rice and John, although he is listed as a tight end. But I think our starting three wide receivers are good. They're really good playmakers. And I think we can go into the season with a good, healthy wide receiving core. It's good enough. The key word here being good. They're not a great wide receiving core. It's not as though it was the wide receiving core of 2016 with Beckham, Shepard, and Cruz, which was, in my opinion, a great wide receiving core because we had depth that year too on that side of the football, except for the offensive line, of course. But it's a good one. It's good enough, and it's really good for Daniel Jones because he's played with all three of these guys before. He has some sort of chemistry with them, especially with Darius Slayton, the newcomer. But it can be upgraded. There is room for improvement. There is room for it to take that step from good to great, and that is by adding another outside threat. And the kind of outside threat that I want is either a deep threat wide receiver or a big body physical one. And I've said, I don't think there's a really a way for the Giants to do that this offseason with the remaining time. The draft has passed. You know, the major bouts of free agency has passed and the only big body wide receivers on the market are some old guys. And now there is one that I would like you if you've seen my um, five free agents videos that the Giants should sign if they still go about signing it. I'm not saying they should do this, but if they do want to get another wide receiver, the best option in my opinion is Demarius Thomas. You know, he's a former number one. He's going to come in here and be like a number three or a number four. He's worked with Tyke Tolbert before. I think there's a good connection there. But let's get into what uh, David Tyree had to say specifically about this group of wide receivers that we have. And actually, the article starts off with a quote from Pat Trena, who I think is a Giants reporter. And they say, I think when you have a young quarterback talent, you want to have a linchpin to go along with a young quarterback. When you have an Amani tumor, you want to have a Plaxico Burris. Guys who are proven playmakers who have done it on a big scale and have size, strength, and ability. I think there's something to that, especially more so with a young, unproven quarterback. It gives them confidence and a bigger target. Tyree doesn't believe the Giants have that linchpin. I don't think there's a lack of ability in playmaking with the wide receiving core, especially with Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Evan Ingram. So I think you have a great set of playmakers there, but from the outside, yeah, I think there's still something that could be wanted there. And I definitely agree with him. Like I said, we have good playmakers and we have a good set of wide receivers. It can be improved though, and that will be on the outside. Tyree continues to say, I think Daniel Jones has a lot of similar attributes. Obviously, he's a little more athletic, but from the standpoint of preparation and grit, there's a lot of promising things. But just like when Eli was coming in, it's gonna take time. I feel like he's on a good track, and I think the franchise from a foundational standpoint has a lot of good pieces to build with. And while it's not exactly like he's saying anything negative, but I, I completely agree with David Tyree here, man, you know? And the guy, obviously, we all know who he is, has the catch and everything. He definitely has some pedigree to his name. But David Tyree is speaking facts. It's not like he's saying the Giants necessarily need to go out right now and go and find a big body wide receiver, whether it's an undrafted free agent or a regular free agent. He's just saying, 
they have a good set of playmakers they need somebody else on the outside if they want dj and the offense to take that next step and they don't necessarily have to do it right now he says it's going to take time just like when eli was coming in it took time for eli to both get used to his receivers and for the giants to build the wide receiving group that was on that 2007 winning team so i agree with tyree here um and let me know what you guys think about that because the wide receiving core and it's a topic that's sort of come up now a lot in the offseason especially since the giants didn't really take one in the draft and now that training camp is coming along it's to be honest with you very unlikely that they will go out and get another wide receiver so let's shift into the other article here going over to the defensive side where davon tomlinson says the giants new defense has an alabama feel also from giants wire these guys are great man so i guess as a little preface we all know the new defensive coordinator and in general the entire defensive side of football has changed for the Giants when it comes to scheme. Patrick Graham, the former defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins, also worked with the Packers before as a linebackers coach and with the Giants as a defensive line coach. He's now coming in as our defensive coordinator and we're expected to run some type of fluid slash versatile slash multiple defense, which has a lot of different sets and alignments. So it's gonna call for a lot of personnel that has different talents and versatility to them. And this is what Dalvin Thompson, probably one of the most underrated players on the Giants defense and simultaneously one of the best, had to say about it. He says, the technique kind of reminds me of my Alabama days, Thompson said during a spot on Sirius XM NFL radio last week. You can only pick up so much on virtual meetings and the things like that, so I feel like I've picked up the playbook pretty well over the virtual meetings. And I've been actually kind of interested to see that Thompson is one of the only guys that does not like the virtual meetings because everybody else says that it works well and i'm sure that the teams in the nfl they've done their best to sort of you know adapt to the situation to still teach the players what they need to know to get onto the field without actually being on field with them but thomason is one of the only dudes on the giants team that definitely feels like it has its drawbacks that acknowledges it and says that it can never replace being one-on-one -on -one in person and getting onto the field um, he goes on to say the experience of just being on the football field and going through drills and things like that can't really be replaced. Just going against another person on the field every day makes you a whole lot better player. For defensive linemen, the closer you are to the ball, the quicker your reaction has to be. Your technique has to be precise. If you take one wrong step, it could be a bad play and a bad down for you and the whole defense. So working on and critiquing your technique day in, day out is pretty crucial. You have to drill it drill it in day in and day out even when you're not even practicing which is definitely a fair statement to make so it does make me wonder even though he acknowledges these drawbacks about the way that they're learning right now even though he knows and well quite frankly everybody knows that there's only so much you could do over a webcam you know over computer screens how much is the defense like the alabama the nick saban defense that's running ncaa how much is it how much similarities are there is thomason just picking up on the few things that they're allowed to you know show through the meetings on the few things that they actually have the ability to show through meetings or has he seen enough is he actually seeing the entire defense as the same way he would if it was a one-on-one -on -one, and then there actually is a similarity to the alabama defense the reason i'm asking this is because i think in 2017 when james betcher came on Dalvin thomason said the same thing no 2018 Dalvin thomason said the same thing about the betcher defense he said it reminds him of the alabama defense so for the past you know the past two defensive coordinators dt is saying the same thing maybe he's saying that because you know he wants to be nice and he doesn't want to say anything bad about the defense or maybe he's saying it because like i said there's only so much being shown and what is being shown to him is looking like what he's seen before so definitely something to keep in mind here the article goes on with another thomason quote but this is not really focused on the defense it's just focused on team building and bonding he says we've all been playing call of duty together every night just to get to know each other i'm super excited to play with everybody we brought in and i'm hoping everything clears up so we can get on pads and get back to training camp so i'll get used to us working together so, you know, another way that the Giants players are bonding, obviously, can't really be in person. So they're bonding over, the, over video games here. And De Thomason is a very big video game person. Like, he's one of my favorite players just off the field. Dude is super chill. Um, the Giants did an interview with him, I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago, where, you know, he, went, he showed us his room. Dude is like a big Dragon Ball fan. He's a sneakerhead, a music head. He watches anime. He's into video games. Dalvin Thomason 
he's a super cool dude off the field man and obviously one of the more underrated players on the field and it's great to see that he's using a couple of his interests to bond with the dudes he's going to pl be playing with on the field eventually you know i hope that these can translate to the field that's the most important thing here and it's nice to see that the players are finding ways to still bond even in a time where you can't do it as you normally would so that's what i got for you all today um on thomason's comments i'm gonna take it with a grain of salt simply because he even you know he even acknowledges that you can't get everything done in virtual meetings so i'm not sure how much of his statement is accurate and because he said it before and with david tyree i completely agree the wide receiving core is good as of right now it can be improved but it doesn't necessarily have to be something addressed right away so let me know what you guys think put your comments down below and i'm out Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.